Okay, so I again I have a classroom uh, note. So if you have if you want to get access to it, you could email me. This is my email address. Okay, so so before we start, I like to first go over some uh, basic concepts of this uh parts so for pipes and pumps so the first thing i just go through it according to your syllabus so the first thing is lamina and turbulence turbulent flow so this uh the criteria is quite direct so so you all know the reynolds number if this number less than 2,300, then it's lamina. Otherwise it's turbulent, but uh, you should bear in mind that turbulent doesn't mean fully turbulent. So turbulent not equal to fully turbulent. And this will reflect in your in the next part about Moody chart. So if it's lamina, then there's a very uh, good uh, characteristic for friction factor, which is F equals 64 over Reynolds D. It's only valid for lamina. And then you have Moody chart. This is a very important part of, of this chapter. So you need to know how to read the Moody chart. So in the Moody chart, so it's in a form like this, we have a left-hand side friction factor, a right-hand side epsilon over D. So, and the horizontal axis is Reynolds number. Okay, I just put take the chat function out in case I miss anything. So, so the horizontal one is Reynolds number. Okay, so then uh, what we have is uh, the the multi chart has several parts. So first is in the lamina region. So I will use red. So this one is lamina. And you should refer the lamina, since if this is linear, as would have uh, here. So uh, beyond that, we have a fully turbulent, we have a fully turbulent section looks like this. So for this fully turbulent section, that means the friction factor only has a relationship with Reynolds number. So that means if you have a fixed Reynolds number, then you could directly go up and find the corresponding F here on the, on the left-hand side. And then there's a, uh, there are several lines you can see in this way then this way so each line refers to a specific uh epsilon over d so for example if you have an x for example this one let's say is 0.01 if you have a epsilon over d equals 0.01 then you could you should find your friction factor on this line so so how to determine it? You first have your epsilon over D and then you have a, your Reynolds number. Let's say for example, this is 10 to the power of six. You have your real number 10 to the power of six. Then you could find your friction factor by, by putting it at the left, uh, left, left axis. So this is basically how you read the Moody, uh, Moody chart. 
three parts for lamina, for fully turbulent, and for the region beyond. Okay, so, so you don't need to worry about the transition region or, the, or smooth. So those two are just for reference, won't be tested, I think, in, in this exam, or maybe. But basically, in, in terminology, since you have no way to calculate the transition range and so on. But this is how to read the Moody chart. You should always bear in mind and remember and know how to do. Do some practice on this. This will be benefit for your exam. And then next one is losses. What are the losses and how to calculate them? So these are two parts. So major and minor, I don't want to repeat the, the definition of major and minor losses. You should refer them to your notes. Uh, I think uh, uh, for notes one and two, uh, there's just uh, what I want to say is about the calculation. So for friction part, HF is, the equation is pretty simple, but times F times friction factor times L over D. So this is how to calculate the head loss of friction, caused by friction. So you're in general practice, since we have the volume flow rate equals area times the cross-sectional area times velocity and cross-sectional area, since we are in pipe, usually is, is a circle. So we have half D squared times pi times U. So this gives us four, uh, so pi D squared U or divided by four. So then we could have U equals four Q over pi D squared. So this put this into the function it, give a, it gives us HF equals eight Q square over pi square D to the power of four times F times L over D. So you will see this many, many, many times in, in your future, in your practice of questions. And yeah, so this is basically how to calculate the friction part. And also uh, for minor losses, two scenario, you, you should, uh, so, so there are several scenarios uh, mentioned in your, in the note provided by Alessandro, I think it's note two. And so, so there are two things uh, you should buy in mind. First is how to calculate the hair loss is fairly simple times k. The k is determined by determined by scenario. So there are two scenarios you should uh, be familiar. First one is from a small pipe to a large pipe, a sudden change of diameter. So this one, it has a k, I call it one. KL1, it has a function of one minus D square over small D square over large D square, uh, and then the difference squared. And another scenario is, so, so this part, this is small D, this is big D, and another one is from big, large pipe to small pipe. So this one is big D, this one is small D. So this one, it has a chart forms like this. So this is D or D square over D square. This is friction. So this is zero, this is 0.5. So, so the scenario you should bear in mind is if Uh, yeah, name D over D goes to zero. So that means the, 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 the big D is so big, for example, you have a free stream uh, pipe out 
or, or something like that. So, so, so that means we have a very large big D. So you have pipe going into a reservoir or, or something like that. So for this scenario, we have KL1 should be one and KL2 should be 0.5. So this relationship should, should always be remembered as uh, you will use it if generally this is what we are asked to use if there's a minor loss should be considered. And then we have for pipes, uh, for multi, multiple pipes, multiple pipes, what we have is, well, there are two principles. So for serial, Q is the same along the whole system. And for parallel, head loss is the same. So I think this is fairly easy to understand. For example, we have two, two pipes here from A to B. So, so it's obvious that the from pipe one and pipe two. So the head loss of pipe one and pipe two should be the same. Otherwise, there will the, the flow will, for example, if pipe one's head loss is larger, then the, the flow in pipe two will goes into pipe one, which is not the case. So, so pipe one, the head loss of pipe one and pipe two should be exactly the same. And this is a core principle you should remember when you deal with parallel problem. And in the server, I think this is most straightforward. You should get familiar with, for example, if I have, uh, uh, several pipes connected together, connected together, you should have your uh, queue the same. Right. Okay, and then uh, it's about the uh, pipe. Uh, Okay, so, so I just saw a question on, few questions on chat. So if your epsilon over D is between two, two of the axis value, do it to the closest line. Yes, if you, if it's in the between, oh no. So in, it, it depends. So if it's really close, for example, you, you have a two values 0.01 and 0.02, and you'll find your value is point uh, 011 or, or something very close to 0 0.01, then you should use the closest one. If it's in the middle, you should somehow find a line in between. So imagine a line in between and read according to that imagine line. And what about the turbine and smooth pipe? What about the turbulent? Tur fully turbulent is, as I said, if you so for fully turbulent case, if you have, uh, so it's fully depending, determined on the Reynolds D. So if you have a fixed Reynolds D, then you have a corresponding friction factor. And that is how, and for smooth pipe, for smooth pipe, uh, I don't think there's any problem about smooth pipe, but there's a line. So you should follow that line to, to get your friction factor. So I think uh, those are pretty fairly simple. Uh, I will quickly go through the concepts very quick. So don't worry, won't play. Uh, so for the for the characteristic of turbine, so there's a curve like this. So you have radial, radial. You have mixed, and you have axial. So for this one, you should first calculate the specific speed, which is an S, and then determine the specific, uh, and then determine the, determine which part it is according to the specific speed. For example, if let's say this is 0.1 and this is 0.05, then for example, if I have a specific speed in this region, and then it's radical. Uh, radical. If it's, for example, 0.7, then it is axial. So that is how you basically how you determine the uh, characteristic. And also, 
sometimes it will give us a head head from the pipe is a function of uh, function of Q or something. And then you are asked to calculate the corresponding uh, things. So, so I think those are fairly simple and I won't mention too much. So, so yeah, so this is about how to pipe and pump network match. So in that way, you should have your, uh, the head generated by the pump equals to the head loss caused by the pipes. So those are fairly simple, I think. Fairly direct, but not simple. Sometimes calculation might be a little bit difficult. So now we are going to talk about the questions. Uh, and so we first go through the pipes. Questions in pipes are more difficult. Uh, okay, so just let me take out the, the pipes. So yeah, so for the first one, I think the first one is, is pretty straightforward. Just give me a second. Yeah, so, so in first one, it gives you a pipe in this way. You know the PB here and PA here. So the density is, is 1260 and the viscosity is 1.49 yes, second square meter. The flow rate is given, which is eight kilometer per, per hour. So bear in mind here is an hour. So in your calculation, you need to convert it to kilometer per second. And first it's asked to, to determine the Reynolds number. So it's asked about flow is laminar turbulent. So in this case, you need to calculate the Reynolds number, right? Uh, the Reynolds number is given a is given, D is given to so have your Reynolds D, right? And then the next question is, uh, what is uh, head loss? So head loss, uh, indicated head loss. So, so head loss is then also fairly, oh, so sorry. The, the next one is uh, about, is the flow up or down? Since we have B at a higher potential energy and also B has a higher, pressure so it's definitely from there's no doubt from e to a and then the third one is about the head loss so head loss is given by by this equation so so this one is pretty simple so So you could have PA minus PB over rho G plus delta Z, right? So we usually when we calculate this uh, HF, head loss of friction, we consider this equation. So this one, we have PA and PB, right? And we have delta Z, so we could easily find the HF. It's pretty simple. So that's all about the first one. Any question? I guess no. So then the second one. The second one is uh, we have a water 
which means rho equals 998 kilogram per cubic meter, mu equals 0 0.01 Newton second per square meter. Flow along a tube, which is 600 meters long and diameter of 50, 15 centimeters. So the flow rate is given, which is 0.06 cubic meter per second. If head loss, it gives head loss as 50 meters. So it asks about the roughness in millimeter. So remember what we have, we have HF equals U squared 2G times F over times, sorry, F times L over D, right? So, so we, we put this into Q in terms of Q and we have eight Q over pi square D, G times pi square times D over four times F over L over D. Here, so we have this equals 50. So then in this equation, we have L is known, D is known, Q is known, constants are known. So we could have a value of F. With a value of a uh, friction factor, you could go to Moody chart to find the epsilon and D. Oh, by the way, so we, you have a uh, friction factor and then you can also calculate the Reynolds D, which is by rho times, refer the previous equation, this one, four rho Q over pi D mu, pi mu times D. So mu is given, D is given, Q is given, rho is given, you could have a Reynolds D and then both of them, you could find Moody chart, uh, you could find the result in Moody chart. So specifically, here you first have your friction factor and then you have your Reynolds number. You put a, you put two lines and find a point, find out the corresponding line and go to the end, you will find your epsilon over D. And with epsilon over D given, here you have, then you could calculate your roughness is epsilon, which is given. Pretty direct, right? Any question? No? Next one. Next one, the scenario of this one is a little bit complex. So we have two container one in another the diameter so this part is 0.5 meter this part is 0.4 meter this part is one meter the diameter Diameter equals two millimeter. Uh, yes, two millimeter. Density seven eight nine kilogram per kilometer. Mu equals point oh one two newton second per square meter. Right. So it has to. So assume the flow is laminar. Remember what we have lamina. The for lamina case, we have F equals 64 over Reynolds D, right? So it asks, says assume flow is lamina and then find the flow rate. Find so ask about Q in Q meter per hour. Take care about the unit. So, so, and then it asks to ask a check if, check if it's laminar. Right, so, so there are two questions, but this exactly is one. So how do we do that? 
So the, the scenario is quite simple. We have a head loss due to friction when the, the flow from upper container goes into the lower container, right? So in this case, since it didn't ask, so we won't take consideration about the minor losses. So only need to consider about the, the major loss, the friction, due to the friction. So then we could have the head loss of friction should be balanced by the delta Z. So this gives us a F times L over D times U square to G. So since we, we, we already said how this one could be transferred into eight half, eight times F times Q square times L over G times pi square times D to the power of five. So it's just uh, the same as what have seen here. They are exactly the same. So then, uh, since we also have the relationship that F equals 64 over Reynolds D, so this gives us Reynolds D is uh, given as rho times Q as I refer to it, four times zero times Q over pi times D. So this is for Reynolds number. So this finally gives us 16 pi D mu over rho times Q. Right. So finally, we have HF equals to 128 mu L Q square, or mu L Q over pi rho G D to the four. So this one equals to the uh, DZ, delta Z, which is point. So it's actually you can find the, the dis distance. The, the high distance is from the, the liquid surface to liquid surface, which means it's 0 0.9, 0 0.4 plus 0 0.5, 0 0.9 meter. So this could, we have mu given, we have L given, we have rho given, G given, pi given, D given. So then we could find Q. And then based on Q, we could calculate Reynolds D, which is something. And, and you will finally find lambda. Uh, the scenario is lambda. Any question? No, okay. Oops, problem four. Problem four, 70% efficiency pump delivers water at 20 degrees. So rho equals 98 kilogram per cubic meter, mu equals 0 0.01 Newton square per square meter. So the scenario is we have a pump here. We have one band, two band, and go to the reservoir, go to a container. Something like that. So the flow is going into the pump in this way. So the high, the high difference here is seven meter. So, so delta H is seven meter, which is pretty pretty obvious. So the pipe consists of tw 20 meters. So pipe length is 20 meters and her diameter is five centimeters. Uh, roughness is 0.15 millimeters and two so so the minor loss 
as I said, is two 90% bands uh, with the blah, blah, blah. And both entry and exit of are sharp edge. So we need to consider three types of losses, minor losses. Entry, minor losses. Entry, exit, and bend. So in, in your exam, I think the bend will be given the exact number of bend losses, this part KL, this part K bend will be given. So it's not given in, in the, uh, in the, in the question, but you could refer to the, to your notes. Well, I don't think this is a very good way, but anyway, so, so for the, for the band, it should be given. So, so let's put it as point. You could record this number as 0 0.45 for your, for your calculation to, to, to check if you have the same answer as given. So then you also need to consider about the entry and exit. So we, we first have the equation here. So as we all know, the, the flow from lower surface to upper surface is powered by the palm. So we have the head, head uh, comes from palm is equals, equals to the head loss due to friction plus the head uh, difference of uh, due to the height. So then this given as delta Z plus U squared over two G times First, we consider about the uh, friction, and then we need to consider about the k at enter, k at exit, and k of bend. The bend is given as this one. The enter and exit, this is the two scenario I mentioned, very important. So for enter, it means you come from an infinite diameter to a small diameter. So that means D over D goes to zero. So recall the scenario we mentioned here. So you, you from an infinite to a small one. So that refers to a, a friction of 0.5. And on the contrary for an exit, you have from a small diameter to an almost infinite diameter. So that gives your uh, coefficient, friction coefficient of one. So this gives this one as 0.5, this one as one, and this one. And then next, the problem is, this one is given as 0.45, uh, the, the band loss. So then we also have the L is given, D is given, and yeah, and that's all. So we don't know about, uh, do we know about, yes. So, and also, I just think that means something. So also we have the volume flow rate Q, which is given as 11 liter per second. You sh you'd better uh, transfer to Q meter per second. Okay, since you have Q, then with the Q equals uh, sorry, Q equals U over A, sorry, Q equals U times A. So we have U equals Q over A equals four Q over pi D squared. So then you have Q given, D given, pi given. So you could calculate velocity. So then you have Reynolds D given. With Reynolds D with epsilon over D, you could find F. So F is given. And then you have U given, G given, delta Z given. So then you could finally, you could finally calculate delta H. 
And then with delta H, you could then calculate the power of pipe, uh, power of pump, which is rho G delta H pump times Q over efficiency. So this is fairly easy to understand. So for Q is actually A times U, right? This part, rho GH is uh, pressure. So for the, for the upper side, it means pressure times area, which gives to a velo uh, force. So that is somehow force times velocity. So this is, this is the power of uh, output power of pump. Output power of pump. Divided by efficiency, so that is the total power. What is the input power? So that is the input power. And that's all about the force, force problem. Why is 0.45? Uh, I don't think you need to exactly know. So if you want to find, you could refer the nodes, the second node. It gives different scenarios and you could find corresponding factor there. But in real exam, I think all the, of such kind of, for example, if they want you to calculate the loss in band due to band, they will give you the factor. You don't need to figure it out. Uh, but in this case, you could refer the second your second node to find the corresponding uh, factors. Okay, so the fifth one. Uh, it's asked about the small turbine shows the small turbine. So the scenario is you have a big container connected by a turbine, a pump anyway, and then it has a exit. So this part has a length of 30. I will call it L2, length 2 of 30, damage 2, 4, centimeter. So for this part, we have a length of 10 meter and diameter of six centimeters. The height of, of the container of water is 20 meters. So we have a pump with a power of P pump, output pump, our output power of P is 400 watts. So both pipes uh, has a roughness of epsilon. So epsilon one the epsilon equals epsilon two equals 0.46 times 10 to the minus three meter. So it asks about the uh, cube. So this is fairly simple since uh, the balance is quite straightforward. What you need to do is, uh, so you have your, uh, so, so you, you should have the power output from the pump exactly the same as the loss uh, due to, during the whole process. So then it's pretty easy to get that H pump. This is the head generated by pump because delta Z, delta Z, which is the height difference minus HM. So this, in this term, at this time, delta Z is positive because the water is from higher to lower surface. So that means uh, some head also generated by the, by the, sorry, by the height, by the delta Z. So, or you could put it in the other way as 
HF minus that is a so so it is quite obvious that the pump is kind of overcome the mm, no sorry so so the pump is help to to help to push the more fluid out and that will since the flow rate is increased so the friction will increase so finally it will reach a balance that the so so something like this so so hf could be calculated by the e to the four since we have two different diameter at, at two pump two pipes so that means we could have it the the friction head loss as F1 times L1 over D1 plus F2 times L2 over D2 plus. So we have two losses. First is as the uh, entry and the first and second one is at the exit. So K entry and K exit. But for this problem, I think it's not well designed so but there's no way we could do that so so assumes what i've got from the solution assumes the the k at the entry is the same as this one so that means it's from it's from a small tube to a large tube kind of so that means if you have d over d equals goes to zero then the entry uh, loss is 0.5 and exit is one. So then it's pretty straightforward. We could have uh, HF in the as a function, so a constant times Q, Q squared. Oh, sorry. So, so then we have 2K given we have l2 given d2 given l1 given d1 given q is unknown pi and g are given so then the problem is how to find f1 and f2 so here is a trick so we we should assume it is fully turbulent since since in this scenario, you don't have flow rate, you don't have velocity. So that means you cannot calculate, you cannot calculate Reynolds number. Without Reynolds number, uh, you, you cannot find a corresponding friction factor uh, on, the, on the Moody chart. So, so here we assume is, well, not exactly fully turbulent, but if you go to look at the Moody chart, you will find that. So for for this for this profiles, the the line goes to almost direct after it passes a specific Reynolds number. So if you have Moody charts, you could take it out. I think you have been given a data book. So it's, I think in page six. So, so for Moody chart, after for each given uh, roughness, when it passed a specific Reynolds number, the change of friction factor is almost zero. And that specific Reynolds number is somehow the same as fully turbulent flows corresponding Reynolds number. So that's why I, I say, assume it is fully turbulent, but also you could uh, say, so, so the, we assume the friction factor doesn't change. So it very cool, uh, the Reynolds number is high enough. So the friction factor doesn't change. So then you, this will allow you to determine 
friction factor simply by epsilon over d. So this is something you, you know in this problem. So you could then have F1 and F2. And then you could have your HF as a constant times Q squared. So uh, I just noted the question, I will go through it after I finish this part. So then what we have is, we have power of pump equals to, as we talked about it previously, rho times G times Q times delta H equals to rho times g times, since we have delta h equals delta z minus hf. So then we could have it as rho times g times q times delta z, oops, delta z minus hf. So then it gives us, so then we have rho non, uh, so this one is 400 watts. This is given in the problem, in the question. So we have rho non, g non, and delta z dan non. So this will give us a cube root, a uh, cube of q, plus uh, a, a times Q of Q plus in the form of this one and equals zero, equals, sorry, not zero, but a constant C. So for this type of equation, we mentioned in previous tutorial, we use the interpolation to find the, to find the Q. I won't uh, pay too much attention on this anyway. So then you will have finally Q. By, by several iterations. And that is what we want here. So the question is, how is the entry going from small to large? How is entry going from small to large? So, so if you look at this scenario, I think the plot given in the problem is somehow not so good, but I do feel it's actually in a, in a scenario like this. So you could have a something like this. And you have a high difference here as delta z. But anyway, I just follow what has been given on the solution. I don't know why to be honest, but again, if it has really in this problem, if it has a band and the, the problem really want to, to calculate based on band, the K will be given in the real exam, I think. I won't give, I can't give you a promise since I didn't do, I'm not the person who decide what to be tested in the exam. But for my knowledge, for my understanding, the K should be given if the scenario is not included in your notes. If the scenario is included in your notes, you could always refer to your notes and, and get the K corresponding K. I hope that answers your question. Okay. Yeah, so as the, the questions five, six, seven are not so good. I really don't like this, but anyway, I need to cover them. So for question six, let me, let me be quicker, uh, only five minutes left. So the scenario is, it's, it's a, looks a little bit complex, but actually it's not. So we have a two pipes connected. So this is a serial connection. We should always bear in mind that Q is the same. 
is the same. So we have a higher level, a lower level. So according to the problem, so the two seven meters long, so that means this one, so that means L1 equals L2 equals L equals seven meters. And epsilon one is 25 milli, uh, epsilon is both, both are 0 0.046 millimeter. And D1 is 25 millimeter. D2 is 50 mil. The entrance and exit are sharp edge. So when you see sharp edge, that means you need to consider about minor loss, right? So rho is given us 998 and viscosity is given at 0 0.001 newtons second per square meter. So this will give uh, the, the delta Z is 20 meter. Okay, so then we asked to, to calculate the, compute the volume flow rate in, remember, pay attention, it's asked to later per second. So you always need to be cautious about the unit. Okay, so the scenario is quite easy. So we have H half should be the same as delta Z, which is 20 meters. And then we need to calculate HF, the head loss due to friction, which is, since we have a change in diameter, so we write it in this way, times F1 times L1 over D1, D power five plus F2 times L2 over D2 times five plus K entry, over D1 divided by four plus K exit over D2 divided by four. So this D1 and D2 are just are coming from here. So basically it's actually a, in the form of D1 divided by four plus F1, L1, D1 plus K entry over K entry and plus uh, blah, 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 for D2. So we put D1 into here and here, and we finally get this. So again, K entry 0.5, as we discussed previously, K exit one, F2 and F1, again, you need to follow the assumption here. So you could, since you have epsilon, you have D, you could find F. And then always you need to, after you get your volume flow rate, you need to go back to chat, check if that fits your assumption. But in most cases, since they ask you to do so, or they hint you to do so, that means it should be this, it should be meets the requirement. So that's why I'm not satisfied with this problem because sometimes you check back and you find it's not. So that is quite rubbish, but anyway, so this is the idea. You need to always remember the idea. They, in the real exam, they won't make themselves, the examiner won't make themselves in such an awkward, or such a problem. But the idea should be the same. You need to remember the idea, which is you can estimate friction factor simply by the roughness, the ratio between roughness and diameter. Okay, so then you have your F1 given, Known F2 known, L1 known, D1 known, L2 known, D2 known, and then you could have a, a square. So you could have a, you could have your HF in a function of a constant times Q square. So this one is given is equals to twenty. So you can find your Q. And then you put back, put it back to check if that meets the assumption and that's all about the problem. Any question about this one? Six? No.
Okay, since uh, it's one hour, so if you have any other issue, it's free for you to go, but I will try to cover uh, the rest. And if you are interested, you could still stay. I'm not sure if they will upload the, uh, if they will upload the recording anyway. Asrando never told us about this, but uh, if you want, you could send me an email. Again, my email is this, so I could share my notes with you. And yeah, that's, if you want to go, that's all. And if you want to keep here, I will cover the rest. So the next question is about a parallel pipe. Let's see if there's any problem. No, okay. So a parallel pipe. A and B. Oh, by the way, if you have question, put it to everyone, not simply to me, since I cannot uh, read your question, uh, private message at this time. So yeah, anyway, uh, let's continue in case someone, some question I missed, but yeah. So we have a parallel pipe. LA is 80 meters, DA is 75 millimeters, LB is 60 meters, diameter B is 50 millimeters. So then what we, uh, we also have the volume flow rate Q, which is, 0.035 kilometer per second. Uh, both roughness is 0.26 millimeter, 0.26 millimeters. And then it to us to calculate the delta P equals to what? Uh, no minor loss is given since in, in most parallel cases, minor losses should not, should be ignored, but you always need to refer the question. If they are, they said, okay, it could be ignored, then you will ignore it. Okay, so, so again, for parallel, a very important thing is head loss of A is the same as head loss of B. So that gives us, 8 QA, so we have QA, QA here, QB here. So 8 square of QA times pi square times G times FA times LA, DA, 4 DA, should be the same as 8 times, 8 times of QB square over pi square G DB square times FB times LB over DB. So this gives us QA over QB square of QA over square of QB equals DA five over DB five times LB over LA times FA, FB over FA. Okay, also we know that QA plus QB equals 0.035. So this will give us, so for, so that will give us an equation of QA is uh, equals to a constant times Q. Since in this one, For this one, we have what we know is we have LA known, DA known, LB known, DB known, and we have FA and FB. Again, refers to previous, assume uh, the, the Reynolds number is large enough or is turbulent enough that epsilon over D could determine. So the friction factor is, is constant. So we, we could find friction factor determined by epsilon over D. 
So that gives us LA, FA and FB. So these two are given. So that means we have a QA is a constant times a known number times Q. So this will this will give us QA and correspondingly we could have accordingly we can have QB. And don't forget to go back to check if there's any uh, uh, if that meets our assumption. But anyway, if it doesn't, you have nothing to you can you can do nothing. Um, yeah, so that's basically how. Oh, oh, sorry. So with QA and QB, you could then calculate the delta P by delta B the the head loss since. Uh, the loss at A should be the same as B. So the delta P should be rho times G times H A, or you could use H B anyway. It's the same. And then, so that is basically, as we said, it's basically rho times G times A Q A square over pi square G D A force times F A. L A over D A. So all these things are given unknown now. So we could finally find delta P. This is this is uh, exact how uh, what why is it D B square? Q B square, D B square, where is D B square? I don't know, sorry. Oh, this one, sorry, my typo is, my mistake is D, uh, DB4, okay. Oh, sorry. Anyway, uh, sorry this. so let's move to H1. Uh, so it's a parallel serial series pipe system, and all pipes are D is six centimeters. So if the total pressure drop is given, calculate the resulting. So it's actually this uh, a system of this. So the flow comes in, flow comes out. And this one is L equals 250, L2 equals 100. Oops, uh, this point is one, this point is two. This line is L3 equals 150. So it asks about the total flow rate. Well, this one is well, quite straightforward actually. So we first consider about the parallel part. We have H, H1 equals H2 equals HQ1 square over pi square G D A force times FA times LA over DA equals, oh, sorry, A. B1, F1. L1, D1 equals A times Q2 square over pi square G, D2 force times F2, L2 over D2. Okay, so we could have a Q, also we have Q equals QA plus QB. So, so also for, for then, for the connected single pipe, we have H, H3 equals eight times Q square over. Since this, for, for the single pipe, the flow rate is the whole Q, so big Q. So Q square, eight times Q square over pi square G, D3 force times F3 times L3 over D3. So then we could have delta P equals rho G 
H A plus H C. Since drop loss at uh, at the parallel part should be the same as head loss for a single pipe. So for, for one or for two. So head loss for first one and head loss for third one. Okay, so so this will give us a very long equation, but all the things could be put as a something times Q squared. So for this something, it's actually all these factors. And here we, we need to, again, we need to determine this three. So since we have epsilon over D, it's a known number. So we could find the corresponding, uh, following the similar assumption, we could uh, find the friction, friction factor, and then we could find the gap Q. This is basically the, the eighth. The last one for pipe is, we have three different levels. three different levels, L1, L2, L3, and Z1, Z1, Z2, Z3. So it tell, gives the number, Z1, Z1 is 30 meters, L1 is 80 meters, Z2 is 130 meters, that uh, L2 is 150 meters, that three is 70 meters, L3 is 110 meters. So D uniform, 25, 25 centimeters. Roughness uniform, 0.5 millimeters. So find the, ask about the flow rate. Rate one, flow rate two, flow rate three. Also, rho is 998 and mu is 0 0.01. So, how to do this? This one is uh, the computation is a little bit difficult, but so here we assume at this point the head as a connection point is Z zero. So then it gives us, uh, let me refer to my notes. So it gives us, so, so we assume this at this point, the head is Z zero. So we consider each pipe. So for first one, HF one, it equals to delta, delta Z, Delta Z is Z1 minus Z0 equals HQ1 squared over G pi, four, pi squared D force, D1 force times F1, L1 over D1. So, so we could have Q1 squared equals Z1 minus Z0 times G pi squared D1 five fifths over eight times F L1. So similarly, we could have Q2 either in the similar way and Q3 square in the similar way. For this one, for each of them, we have D1 given, L, uh, L1 given, uh, pi, pi, now these two are unknown. For F1, F1 determined by by epsilon over D, similarly as previous. So F1 is given. So that means, oops, finally, we could have Q1 is something, a number constant times Z1 minus Z0. Q2 is a constant of, sorry, square, yes, square. Constant times Z2 minus Z0. And Q3 is square of 
times that three minus that zero. Okay, so, so, and also, um, and also with mass conservation, we have Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 equals zero. So now we have four unknowns. Z1 is given, Z2 is given, Z3 is given. So we have four unknowns, Q1, Q2, Q3, and Z0. And we have four equations. We could find Z0 and Q1, Q2, Q3. So, but uh, to make this easier, actually what you can do is you could guess Z0 by, by binary, uh, by, by iterations to find the, to find the proper, to, to meet, so, so you could use these three equations to iterate Z0 to meet Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 equals zero. And then finally, you could find the uh, proper Z0, which with a corresponding Q1, Q2, Q3, uh, the sum of them, those three equals zero. Here, you, uh, since you, you need to do square root, you always bear in mind which one is negative and which one is positive. So this one has a lowest uh, height. So that means it's very, very likely that the flow is flowing in this direction. But this one is definitely positive. But for this one, it's kind of hard to determine. So you need to uh, calculate and find based on your results. And that is basically how it works. And then for pumps, pumps part are fairly straightforward. So, so you need to what you need to do is consider the consider different characteristics, and that's almost all. So the first one, the first question is it gives you a chart and lets you let you to determine the uh, BP point. So you first need to determine, you need to know what the BP mean. BP means the, the, the best efficiency point. So where the efficiency is highest. The quantity given, uh, so efficiency is calculated by work output over work input. So in other words, delta P, the, the pressure difference in the flow times Q over BHP, back horsepower power, back horsepower. So this gives us rho GH over Q divided by back horsepower. power. So in, in the chart, in the table given, it has uh, Q, H and P, so you, cal you could calculate uh, corresponding efficiency. And with, with efficiency, you, you simply pick the highest one, you find the highest efficiency and cost corresponding. So that is the BP efficiency. So we have it as efficiency star. And also you, you have the corresponding uh, Q star. So then you could calculate, so it asks about the, specific speed. So that is specific speed defined as N times Q above half times GH divided by three over four. So you can have your, since H is given, H star is given, Q star is given, N is given as uh, in the problem said 2000 RPM, you need to convert it to uh, RP reverse per second, but it's the same. Do it in this way, and then you could find your NS. And with your NS, remember this curve, you could then determine the efficient, uh, determine which type of uh, pump it is. 
And then the next question is fitting H in the code. It asks to, to determine a function. So that is uh, even more sim even simpler. So you could have a H equals A plus BQ plus CQ square and put the numbers in, you will find a uh, H function. And then it says, uh, estimate the maximum, uh, maximum possible discharge. So for this one, that means you need to have this one to zero. So this gives you a Q and that is what we 